Welcome to teachingorchestra.com. We're here again in the teaching lab, and today we're going to talk about beats in the sound. Some people have difficulty hearing beats. Sometimes the beats are gonna sound different in different parts of your classroom because of the acoustics and the physics that are in your classroom. First, I wanna talk about why beats exist. So we know about noise-canceling headphones, right? We've got noise-canceling headphones, and the way they're made is they have microphones built into them. So when noise is coming, into the, into the ear from the outside, it sends a sound wave out that's the opposite sine wave of what's coming in to cancel, to actively cancel that wave. That can happen with our tuning if we have people playing out of tune. Because when somebody plays a note, it has a waveform, and then we have another waveform that's close but not exactly, and at certain points, where one's at the peak and one's at the trough, they will cancel each other out. So what we're actually hearing with beats is the cancellation uh, uh, the acoustic cancellation of pitch that affects the amplitude or the volume of sound. So we're going to go with Cody here and we're going to do uh, an example of how we can get our students to hear the beats. And this particularly works well in unisons and it works well in octaves too. But for, this, for the purposes of this, we're just going to learn how, and, and a lot of upper string players have difficulty getting their fourth fingers in tune. This is how we can get them to hear the beats in the sound. So, I'm going to have Cody try to play in tune an A on the D string as a double stop with this open A. And it's going to be interesting because he's actually having to hear two notes at the same time. Oh, which one's in tune and which one's not out of tune. It might not be obvious at first. So he has to adjust one way or the other and his brain has to be able to detect what is making the change. Is it this note that's higher or lower? You know, what exactly are we listening to? So we're going to hopefully hear some beats. It, it's weird that I'm telling you to play out of tune, right? That's, that's not typical. So we're going to hopefully play out of tune and then get him to adjust so that he can hear, we can hear the beats and then we can hear those beats go away. So uh, without further ado, let's see what we got. Okay, so we got to hear a lot of different things in that sound, and, and that's amazing because we got to hear sort of this like Penderecki type thing at the beginning where he was so far out of tune that there weren't any beat beats available because the, the pitches were just too far away. As he started moving closer, we could hear the beats in the sound, and then he locked in the pitch, and then he started going above. We started to get the beats again, and then he came back down and locked in the pitch again. When students are practicing individually, this is a great way for them to learn how to tune at home and be able to get to hear those beats so that when they're sitting next to somebody else and they're both playing in unison, they can hear the beats occur with them and their stand partner, um, maybe then with somebody else across the room or something, and then they start to be able to hear the beats and the sound and they, they know how to tune them. They say, well, am I out of tune or they out of tune? Hopefully they're adjusting and they're matching each other. So that's just a short demonstration on beats and how to tune. This is a great exercise to teach your students so that they have some practice tips that they can use at home to learn how to tune so that not all of it has to be done in the classroom. Hope you enjoyed this and please check out our other videos.